What's going on guys? Welcome back to another new release video. This one featuring 2023 Upper Deck Extended Hockey Series, also known as Flagship with Bad Young Guns, which we'll get into. We got a hobby box of the newest stuff and uh, yeah, just came out today. This was a 155 Canadian, uh, probably can be had for, seen it online for like 140. Uh, so anywhere between 140 and 150 is what you're going to expect to find it for. Uh, probably should be like 99 bucks if we're really honest with ourselves. Maybe like 120 top sort of thing. Pretty much every review I mentioned that. So I kind of lost my voice today. So I'm going to have the microphone a little close and hopefully uh, hopefully it doesn't blow out here by the time I'm done this. So eight cards per pack, 24 packs per box. Not the new 12 card format that we'll see uh, next year. The annual summertime, no good young guns release. Although last year was better than this one, I think. This is sort of like... Almost, I think, on 20, 20, 20, 21 level of bad young guns. We'll, we'll go over the young guns in a bit here. So it's the uh, flagship. You get uh, cards 501 to 700. So the uh, set is extended. 50 rookies. Only 30 of those are young guns. 20 are this new card called first round rookies, which I'll talk about in a second. You're going to get your usual base cards with the parallels. So French clear cuts, exclusive high gloss. You're going to get all those as usual. You're also going to get those in the young guns. But like I said, now they've got uh, these first round rookie cards, which also have the parallels. So you get 30 young guns and 20 of these first round rookies. So I think what happens happened here is Upper Deck realized that the Young Guns crop. So it's either they got lucky and had this planned already and it just turns out that the Young Guns crop is terrible or they saw the Young Guns crop was awful and decided we have to do something to justify the price we want to charge for this. So they created this first round rookie card. You're going to get in here with the Young Guns. So you're going to get six Young Guns or those cards. It's like one or the other. So probably like, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if it's going to be like four and two or three and three or something like that. You're going to get the same parallels of those cards. A little harder to hit those cards though, obviously, than the uh, base parallels. So aside from that, you can Canvas is back, standard standard stuff. UD Canvas is in every flagship set, but there are some uh, Legends and All-Star Weekend versions of those a little harder to hit, as well as printing plates of the canvas, which are one of ones, of course. Uh, there's also black and white variations of those, which are back, pretty hard to hit, as well, especially the Legends, one in 1,080 packs, very tough. Uh, so as far as the inserts go, uh, I've got a bunch of retro sets. So one thing Extended does is to try and differentiate itself from the other sets is a lot of retro designs uh, they bring back for this set. So you lose a couple of the holdovers, uh, like Series 1 and 2 has Superstar Honor Roll, that's gone. Lots of the ones from Series 2, the inserts from Series 2, like uh, Lunchbox Legends, gone. Forget it. Forget it, it was terrible anyway, so it's gone. Uh, so yeah, so... Aside from the Dazzlers, which I'll mention, Dazzlers is the only holdover, I think, from all of them. And the Young Guns, the rest are all new inserts for, for Extended. So, 1997 Collector's Choice Commemorative, which is three-card puzzle. Then you've got 1997-1998 SPX, which is a die-cut nod to an NBA design. And there's Sky Blue versions of those for the veterans, or 1 in 60 for the rookies, or 1 in 60 for the veterans, and 1 in 40 for the rookies and those. Then you've got 1999 History Class, again, another throwback. 1 in 40 for the veterans, 1 in 60 for the rookies as well. And there's also numbered versions of those, which are die-cut, the regular ones. Non-die-cut, just a regular card. And then for some more recent designs, you've got 0607 Black Diamond and retros with the uh, star tiers just like last extended one star one to four stars depending on the player and you've also got 0708 upper deck retro young guns those are one in 24 packs and you also got gold stockpile versions which are exclusive to blaster and fat packs which is interesting so not in hobby uh, and we've also got uh, Black Diamond Dominance, which are numbered to 1,000. Interesting, there's 1,000. That's a number 90s, 90s set. 1,000 is an odd number to pick. A number card to 1,000 might as well not even be numbered. Blue Dazzlers are back. Definitely get one in here as well. Holographics, which were in last year's, potentially, I think, have been in all three versions of Extended. They are in here as well. Well, one in, there's also the Future Fame series, which I think are holographics. Uh, one in 504, so almost like a case hit there. It's a little harder to pull. Uh, there's a couple acetate cards in here. Clear dominance are one in 120, and smooth grooves are one in 30. So chance of getting one of those pretty high. Uh, another one that's in here that's always boggles my mind how much people don't care about these cards. Day with the cup, one in 1,000 cut, one in 1,000 packs. I've pulled one of those before, and it sold for like $18. Like unless you're a fan of the team that won the cup that year, it's just for how hard the pull is. No one cares about. It. Is what it is. Uh, and as far as autos, uh, as usual for flagship, not exactly, not exactly what flagship is about but there are a couple in here the 0607 black diamond retro emerald autos are signed so veterans number to 10 and the rookies number to 25 and that's it for autos not much in there so like i said eight cards per pack 24 packs per box 12 boxes per case uh, the box break average is two numbered or rare ratioed cars, so like harder to hit cards. Six young guns or first round rookies, you don't really know. Four UD canvas cards, four 2007-2008 upper deck retro inserts, two 2006-2007 black diamond retro cards, one base French parallel, one clear dominance or smooth grooves PETG inserts, you're guaranteed to lose one plastic card. And you're going to one of the, each of the following, 1997 collector's choice commemorative insert, 1997-98 SPX retro sky blue insert, 1999 history class insert, and a dazzle blue and yes yeah, standard checklist so the one thing that's interesting is these first round rookies um the 
We're, the young guns in here, the class overall is pretty terrible. Um, like, the only name that anyone really... Had, like, Jonathan Bergeron, probably for sure the top guy, but he's not exactly a superstar. A decent hockey player for sure. Being on Detroit helps. Just some hobby love on a team. You know, he'll get some hobby love because he's from Detroit. But aside from that, the names are pretty weak. Um, they were better last year, I think. Even the last year wasn't strong either. I recognize, like, Amblin from being an oiler. Person in, just okay on Nashville. But aside from that, they're pretty weak. So I feel like, like I said, either Upper Deck got lucky or they just decided that they had to make this better and they did these first-round picks. So uh, the first-round pick are all, again, first-rounders, obviously. So most first-rounders are pretty well-known hockey players and pretty good hockey players. It's interesting to see what people think of these on, like, secondary market values. The card themselves are ugly, I think. Uh, it's just like a, the player in his draft day picture with a little tiny logo attached to it. Like it looks like a base card, draft day photo, and then a little tiny little logo of first rounder put on there. It's kind of a kind of. I think they. I feel like they added that in at the after the fact, like it was slapped together and thrown in there because of how crappy the onions are. That's my. That's a guess, but that's my that's my suspicion. So, so anyway. Let me know in the comments. What would you rather have? Would you rather have like a Tim Bernie young gun or would you rather have a Matt Boldy first round pick, right? Does that make it, the product better? I still don't think they can justify the price they're asking, but odds on the back there. If you're into that sort of thing, pause it and read them. Uh, you got Nick Shizuki. Cole Caulfield just signed his big extension there. Before we start this, I should mention that the, uh, the contest from our, our trilogy contest is still ongoing up until Sunday. So a few days from now, go back and leave a comment. Leave a comment, like the video, do the usual stuff, and you can win either of those two boxes I opened for a trilogy. You should always like and subscribe anyway. That's what you're supposed to do on YouTube. So here we go. So standard pack format. There we go. So green. Two two green releases in a row. St. Patrick's Day trilogy, and now uh, green extended. So, All right. Not going to lie. Expectations are low, but we'll see what we pull out here anyway. So standard base design. Same as Series 1, Series 2. That's, of course, not going to change, although it's players that... Um, weren't on there before and you do get some different cards in here like you get all-star variants usually and things like that so we'll see if we pull those and okay well there you go so uh, speaking of an all-star uh you get an all-star exclusive of adam pellick 94 of 100 well it's always nice to hit a numbered base it's cool to hit a numbered base card pellick is not exactly a superstar but i mean he's been good decent for decent for them for a long time let's see what his stats here three he's a defenseman after all so you kind of kind of got to go easy on him but Definitely a not, not flashy stay-at-home kind of guy. Three three goals in 78 games for 28 points. But cool card to hit off the bat there. And then, of course, same old format. You've got the... Uh, so there's a regular all-star variant. Historically have gotten in extended here. Yeah, it's not like the new format where you're going to have the uh, hits at the end. So has got dry saddle there in his all-star uniform. So that's kind of neat. Another all-star. So all-stars are pretty common. That's how they extend the base. Three all-stars in a row. Very common. So different photos. And so there's our Kirill Marchenko. So our first... First young gun there, 22-year-old forward for uh, Columbus, obviously. And he played uh, He played, played 59 games last year, 21 goals, 4 assists. 21 goals and 4 assists for 25 points, so he's not a playmaker. But uh, he can at least put the puck in the net, so arguably one of the better ones there. Again, none of these guys are really amazing, though, so return on the young guns is going to be limited. It's kind of what we've know to, come to know from extended, though. Weak young guns, that's just how it works. So you got Kemper, all-star of Giroux there, black in a Rangers uniform, and there's our first canvas of Vitek Vanacek. So had a decent run with the uh, the Devils this year. Definitely shown himself to be a better than I think a lot of people thought. It's the base, standard. So this is the last, last release of the old format, so... Last of the old guard here. So we got another canvas there of Stuart Skinner. So two goalies in a row there. Another, another goalie who proved... Proved himself quite well this playoffs. The all-star of Talbot there. Stanley Cup finalist, which I hate to say, Matthew Tuchuk, although really behind the eight ball now. All right, so horizontal card of Stastny. Looks like another young gun here. And all right, well, say so Jonathan Bergeron, the one you want to hit, but should have known that looks funny, but there's a checklist. So you got Bergeron and Pontus Holmberg on there. Holmberg is another decent one. Again, none of them are amazing, but... Now, do they consider the checklist to be the hit in this pack? They might. Should always check for the French variants. Itch, I don't see. So, yeah, this one's hit was a checklist. So, all right. And so it looks like we're going to have another. Okay, this time I think we got Ricky Jam of Owen Powers. This is uh, three di three diamonds. Three gems, three diamonds. Well, so the black diamond. Owen Power, one of the definite better rookies of this crop for sure. So that's a decent card. Take that. Oh, yeah, again, the last time we'll be ripping 24 packs. So here is the retro. That's a 708, I think. Timo Meyer. Very very simplistic design back then. And I've, I've opened, like, some some old retro... Well, just opened some old packs and stuff and, or got these old cards. It always amazes me that they went with this. You can barely see the guy's names. Interesting card. Definitely seems like it's older than 0708. Like, if I had to guess, I'd have been like, this is from, like, the early 90s. But, yeah, it's actually from the early 2000s, so... 
So kind of typical for any flagship product. Some of the inserts are a little bit messy. Here's our first retro young gun or a retro young gun. Jake Sanderson on the uh, Ottawa Senators there. So a decent defenseman. Again, defense would never get much hobby love, but kind of a cool retro, the retro young guns design. There you go, people, I mean, they don't like that. They don't like the retro young guns as much in general, but uh, at least you get better rookies on there in, you know, this product with bad young guns. At least the retro young guns are better players. All-Stars, Thatcher, Demko. All right, so this will be a no, Jack Hughes All-Star variant. Now, I wonder if this is a two different versions of his All-Star card, if this is like the photo variant All-Star, or this is what his All-Star card looks like. I'm not sure on that one, but interesting card. Doing a little magic there before his uh, shootout attempt. And then here's our first first round draft card. So there's a David Juracek or Juracek. So yeah, like I said, it's basically a base card with the draft photo and this tiny little logo. And because it's black, you're going to get a lot of this happening so you're gonna get edge damage is gonna be much more noticeable if they're all black like that but interesting card so there you go let me know what you think in the comments i don't really like it i think they should have been like a whole different design not just this logo slapped on there but again just makes me sort of think that um kind of think a little bit that this is like a last minute thing they did to try and better this product but cody cc on the retros the reverse retros like that derek stepan that's one thing about uh this set is you get guys like a derek stepan get a hockey card to fill out the set with 700 cards, it's a lot. So, all right, here's our first puzzle piece. So, Tage Thompson. So let's say that's the right side of the puzzle. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're numbered one to three. So, so, if that's your jam, you got to collect some more of those. So, probably best bet is to buy it if you want those things. So, there's Tage. Fast left scale star. I'm trying to think if there's ever been a puzzle puzzle insert that I liked. I don't think so. Tio Myers, so we got some kind of a shiny card here. This will be... Oh, there you go. All right, so here's our history class of Ovi. So this is the non-numbered insert. So, yeah, Ovi's a good player to hit, but nothing too special there. This one, numbered in the die cut would have been nice, but still a good-looking card. The retro jersey looks nice. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a, that's a decent-looking in, decent insert. Give it credit there, even if it's not too rare or anything like that. Just got Gensel in his all-star jersey. All right, first half of the pack here, and we got something clear. This will be, actually, this is probably our uh, our plastic card, our PTG card, yeah, it looks like it. So it is a clear, do well, we'll take that. Clear dominance of the German machine, Leon Dreisaitl. That's a pretty cool card. Now are these, I'm trying to think how hard these are to hit. As an Oilers collector, I'm pretty pumped about this, but let's just see here. This is a lot harder to hit than the uh, Smooth Grooves card. Yeah, so Clear Dominance is 1 in 120. Quite a bit harder to hit this than the Smooth Grooves card. Smooth Grooves, so we'll take that. And obviously, uh, one of the best players in the NHL, arguably the second best. I'm an Oilers fan. I'm allowed to say that. That'll be going in the personal collection on the shelf right behind me. I don't know why I chose this arm. There we go. And the base behind it. Some more All-Stars. Or an All-Star, anyway. So far, I'm enjoying it. Don't think the price is there. This is going to be a fun, this is going to be a much similar, similar to extended previous years. This is going to be a really fun product when it's down to like 70 bucks. And that's going to be a good buy. And so, all right, Braden Schneider, first round draft. So, was one of the like top guys, top ish guys, definitely the top 10 for series one, uh, underrated defenseman for sure. So, stay at home, non flashy guy, but in the for the Rangers, but. Decent card. I like Schneider. Probably doesn't get the love he deserves or will ever get the love he deserves, but there we go. And a bunch more base. All right. So we got a couple more young guys to go here. So UD Canvas of Jake DeBrusque. Another guy that sort of had a better playoffs than I expected he would. I mean, they, they lost in the first round, but he was decent. He's a, good, he's, a, he's a better hockey player than I ever gave him credit for. Better than his dad, although I love his dad as a color commentator. So Buke's dad still on the uh, Coyotes there. Of course, he went to the Oilers. So we got our, all right, Cole Caulfield, Black Diamond, not a rookie, of course. Last year would have been a rookie. 21-22 would have been his rookie year, so second year, Cole Caulfield in the Black Diamond. Two stars there. So like I said, just signed his big eight-year extension. Took less than Nick Suzuki, the cover star here, so good team player. Quality control seems fine. Don't seem like bad corners or anything out of the ordinary. Uh, centering on these, it's hard to say. I mean, you can only really tell centering on a lot of these pictures just by, like, looking at the bottom here because a picture could be off-center and you wouldn't really notice. There isn't a lot of, like, telltale signs to show something off center. There's Verhege on the retro. Again, Stanley Cup finalist, Carter Verhege. Although it looks like they're probably... You never know. Never say never, but I assume they're not going to come back. I'll happily eat my hat on that one, though, if they do. So you got all-star of Chris Kreider. And looks like another young gun here. So this one is Mac Hollowell. 
So a Leaf. Always good to have a Leaf young gun just for fan base. Plenty of, plenty of Leafs fans in the hobby, but it's not a name I've ever heard of, which is not a good start. So so 24-year-old defenseman, drafted 118th overall by the Maple Leafs. That's round four back in 2018. So defenseman, yeah, he's been in the Marlies. He played six games, and he's been with the Marlies pretty much his whole career. So probably not going to amount to much more than that other than the depth of guy called up every now and then. So not an amazing one. We already got five, so unless we get a box that's got more than six young guns, we've only got one more coming. So a bunch more retro is probably what's going to be coming next. And a clear of some kind coming out here. Okay. So Petrie got Kairou in his all-star jersey, Klingbird, and a Matt Murray clear-cut base. Interesting. Well, speaking of Leafs fans, there you go. A Mr. Injury himself on the clear-cut base. So take it, I guess. You got Keller in the all-star jersey. They're all still there. Connor, like that one. Anything McDavid will take it. So 1 and 96 to hit a clear cut base. So not a guaranteed pull there. So that's interesting. So there's Freddie Anderson, all star, very pink looking card. And here's our die cut rookie of Dylan Holloway. Of Dylan Holloway. All right, we'll, we'll take that again. There's another the collector, Holloway fan. I think he'll be all right. They're kind of doing it right that they have enough depth that they don't have to force him into his role. I mean, he didn't do amazing things, but I think the potential is definitely there. He's a, he's a very talented player, so. SPX die cut. That's that NBA design. So, a neat one. We'll take it for the Oilers collection. Kyle Connor showing off the flow in the All-Star. Love it. If you enjoy the retro inserts, this is definitely the set for you. I wasn't in card, like, I wasn't really collecting when a lot of these retros came out, so I don't, like, have any nostalgia for me. So, a eh, young gun canvas of Yusuf Parsonin. So, probably the top five in this crop for sure. Did quite a bit this year, I think. So, super late around 2019 draft pick, 210. So, and, uh, yeah, he played 45 games last year for uh, 25 points. So, depth guy, again, probably in the end, but uh, in this crop, he's one of the better guys. So, cool to hit the young gun's canvas. We'll take it. Got the lean on the all-star there. Another all-star is a lot. So, many, tons of all-stars. Horizontal Cam Talbot there. So we got a Blue Jacket young gun of some kind coming up here. Azim Kadri and Tim Burney, a.k.a. Tim Bemmy. So I got a, a redemption of him from Artifacts this year. I didn't know it was him at the time. It was a wild card or whatever. And it says on the uh, website when you go check on your redemption that it's Tim Bemmy. So I had to figure out who the hell Tim Bemmy is, but it's Tim Burney. So depth defenseman, nothing to write home about there either. Well, All-Star Kadri, speaking of, on the All-Star, and there's Kuznetsov on his All-Star photo. And that, I assume, will be it for the Young Guns, I'd imagine. Get our quota at this point, so another retro there of Austin Matthews. A police course hired Brad Treliving, which was a, uh, I don't know, I, hockey sometimes, the old boys, boys club-ishness of hockey just baffles me sometimes. How they just, it's just, I, I, I don't understand it sometimes. It was the best they interviewed, I guess. I don't know. So it's out of Pelican again. So it's just regular card. And we got our Blue Dazzlers here. And it's Samuel Poulin. So it's a rookie Blue Dazzlers. Although he, uh, his little blurb here isn't even about an NHL thing. It's about what he did in the AHL. So he's he's on the player's leave of absence. Took a leave of absence or something like that. So we'll see how he is when he comes back. He's a reasonably high draft pick. So he has potential. But we'll see what happens when he comes back. Checklist there of Tuchuk and a Niederreiter. Final pack of Extended. Probably just going to be another retro, I imagine. Let's see here. Oh, no, French variant. That's right. We're due for that. So, Niels Lundqvist on the French variant. That'll be it. All right. All right. So, overall, a pretty... That's pretty much what I expected, actually. It's a decent box, I would say. So, your standard inserts. This one was nice for me. It's nice rookie insert. And click it was a welcome surprise, even if it's just Matt Murray. Mr. Injury himself, hitting some decent players on the Black Diamond cards also nice as well. And uh, this is nice as well. The OV insert is a nice card as well, so we'll take that. And, of course, power on the rookie gems. Very nice hit there. Hit-ish. Very nice card there. And for the young guns, I mean, it's just so hard to do anything in this crop. One of the better guys there, which is nice. Um, as far as the two first rounds go, first rounders go, decent but nothing crazy. Retro and... Uh, yeah, Marchenko at least would be one of the very, one of the better ones, but nothing nothing too exciting. And then uh, yeah, the two best cards in here, the exclusives. Always nice to hit a uh, hit a lower numbered parallel, even if it's just Adam Pellick. These are never expected, so it's nice to pull one of those. And uh, for sure, my favorite card in there, clear dominance of Leon Draisaitl. So there we go. So overall, 
too expensive. As with everything these days, seems like I, I seems like I say that every, and I probably will continue to say that it's too expensive. Buy at least fifty ish dollars, thirty for sure. Probably fifty dollars too expensive, especially given the young guns crop, which is what you really want at a flagship, and they're just not that good. So their attempt to fix it with the first rounders, I don't think succeeded. I guess it's nice having the parallels, like you know, knowing that there's like a high gloss of a Bernier's card in there is probably nice. At least something a little better than the crappy young guns to chase. So there's that. But still fun rip, and like I said, it'll be super fun rip when it's down to like 70 bucks, 90 bucks, whatever it is when it gets cheap. I'm sure you'll find this stuff pretty cheap come like Black Friday. That'll be a, the special a lot of places. At least historically, that's always how it's been. So hopefully that's the way, it, hopefully that turns out that way. And uh, yeah, so be sure to check back my trilogy video. Link will be down in the description. Check, watch that video. Uh, leave a comment down there to win those two boxes of trilogy. Thanks for watching this far and we'll see you in the next one.